Hello everybody, welcome back to the Lost World LP. We're back in, um, I'd probably say my favourite, possibly, zone. Uh, Skyhold, we're now joined by uh, everyone's favourite uh, member of Branch Scratch Comps who hates Skyward Sword, uh, Ryan. <laughs> Let it be known that I didn't bring it up this time, so... <laughs> you you didn't bring it up in Boom either, but that didn't stop people hating on you in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, and you got quite a kick out of that. <laughs> Gareth, you're the worst person I know. I am. I'm, I'm quite happy with that fact. But uh, <laughs> right, so it's um, it's been a while since we did um, Lost World, and I think um, after speaking with Ted and um, Johnny about it, playing Boom kind of um, made us appreciate this game slightly more. Would you, would you say your opinions change on Lost World much? Uh, in terms of the game in and of itself, no. I appreciate the aesthetics of it a bit more mm. because of Boom. But on the gameplay itself, I still feel the level designs are really quite flawed. Pretty much. I mean, I think um, after playing Boom, the fact that it's the um, solid frame rate and soundtrack, I think I appreciate a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Same. So here we are in a Windy Hill Act 1 again. Yay! Yeah. I think this is my biggest problem with um, the level design. Like, if you, were to, if you were to place the Windy Hill theme on this track, it wouldn't feel out of place. Like this, this could be Windy Hill Act Three for all we know. It's just very, very annoying how much they reuse stuff from other games and from within their own game. It was probably supposed to be Windy Hill Act Three, honestly. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, again, I it's kind of weird how these giant badniks put up more of a threat than most of the Deadly Six boss fights. <laughs> <laughs> well, you actually have a chance of dying to them. <laughs> Very true. So, Ryan, how much do you remember? Now, have you played a Lost World much since the, we did the um, LP? The last time I played it was when the DLC for Zelda came out. <laughs> I love, I love that DLC. That's still my favorite. That's still my, that, that to me makes Lost World worthwhile because of how amazing that DLC is. Yeah, and it's free too. <laughs> you, you know what? It, it, this giant um, caterpillar reminds me of is um, you know in Sonic 3D Blast, the kind of um, the uh, bad nicks that the red flickies are in. We just pop out the same hole over and over again. Kind of just reminds me of that, only more dickish. They're both equally pointless, so I can see it. <laughs> yeah. So who's recording the footage? Is it Gareth or Chris? No, it's, just, yeah, it's all Chris. Yep. Uh, okay. So any complaints you have about the gameplay, just pass it to this forward to Chris. I'll be sure to gloss over them. <laughs> or are you just not man enough to record it yourself, Gareth? I, I don't have a hoppage. I don't have any type of recording software. You could so. buy okay. one. I could buy one, You're in America one, now. You're in the land of opportunity. I had one in England, but it didn't work very well, so I, so I sold it <laughs> and moved away. <laughs> I regret nothing. So again, we, we've been over this in, um, with one of other guests, uh, Ryan. It's as, a, as a refresher, what were your thoughts on the uh, musicless wisps in this game? Why are they here? They have no point. They don't add anything to the game, they're just here because... So no, I don't have much of a solid opinion on them, because I don't try, I try to avoid them as much as I can. You're telling me that thrilling gameplay segment didn't just tingle you up? Reminds me of the hang glider sections in Sonic 06. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! I can't disagree. I will say, kind of like colors, I do like how, for the most part, they did leave the wisps mostly optional. Hmm. Which is, um... Which makes me wonder even more why they're here. Well, okay, I think at this point, um, they were so, like, loved in colors... That they ruined it. Yeah. Well, I think, I think there was an interview where Zuka was like, um... You know, oh, we're gonna we, we're gonna make Wisps become like the like the Sonic power up. You know, kind of like how Mario has like the Fire Flower and the Raccoon Tail and the Cape. Why haven't they brought the Cape back? I want the frigging Cape. Because it's again. too broken. <laughs> it's amazing. Have you seen speedruns of Mario World? It's just the Cape and fly over everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kirby. Well, you know, like Mario Three at at the P, you know. The pea leaf tail thing, which yeah. is my favorite thing about if you at least on the um, original NES version, after you complete Mario 3, it gives you like 20 pea leaves, so you can just like replay the game and just gloss over most of it. 
This might be a tangent, but I, I have to ask Gareth. Is Nez and Snez a British thing, or is that a Gareth thing? That is, that is a British thing. Most people, like everyone in England I know, were first in the Nez and Snez. Uh, okay. I'm not impressed. It's more efficient than going NES, SNES. Or I just call them the Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Yeah, that's what I do. Scrubs. So we beat that level. Yay. <laughs> I kind of like that turtle mini boss we didn't touch on. That was, you know, it's something unique to this level. Yeah, there's something. One of my favorite things is still the fact that, with the exception of um, the end of level sections where he um, Sonic smiles, the only time the in-game Sonic model smiles is when you um, parkour up like a like a wall or something. <laughs> So Sonic's been lobotomized, basically, is what you're telling me. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, it just it just looks like we're in Windy Hill. Like, it just, I, there's nothing that, that sets out Sky Road, at least from this first section, from Windy Hill at all. Where did Eggman get that chair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the real questions here. I know, right? <laughs> We don't, we don't mess around at FDCR. Um, Chris, is there a reason why you spent so long <laughs> uh, that bit? Let me travel back to January. I was probably checking my phone. <laughs> Professional. I, I can't ask it before. I do like Zavik's face model. Like, why, why don't they fight it? A common problem with the Deadly Six <laughs> is that they, they kind of just like go, Sonic, I'm going to kill you and then run away. Like, they all do that to him. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> this is an inappropriate place to dismantle you. Let's go to my secret... <sighs> Fuck this game. So this level is actually um, fun-ish. I would, I would say this level, um, according to the uh, soundtrack, it codenamed the Dragon Dance, I actually think probably probably one of, if not the best level in the game. Yeah, it's at least feels like what would be a Sonic level. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few where you can actually establish a flow, and it's pretty rewarding to keep that flow going. The rest of the game stages don't really offer um, this kind of word I'm not thinking of. This th Okay, so I would say this level offers the... Uh, traditional Sonic ex experience, it's a nice hybrid of speed and actual platforming. And for that, because a lot of the other ones, it's either just running in a straight line for the entire level, or kind of bland platforming sections. This it is a good mixture of the two. It kind of gets your heart pumping too, you know. It's a Sonic well, the level. level forces you to actually move fast, so. Yeah. <laughs> I always like that, like, it's not established where the Deadly Six get all these machines, but I like the fact that, like, like um, Zaz has, like, this kind of weird moon thing. Zor has, like, an like an arrow. Zavok has this, like, never-ending dragon thing for some, for some reason. It's the never-ending story. <laughs> the never-ending gameplay. The never-ending commentary if, it's, if uh, the footage gets lost again. <laughs> Hopefully I, this I would, laptop doesn't die. <laughs> I would laugh if it, if it becomes a running gag of us forever just re-recording Lost World. I would sooner die. The commentary is forever lost. <laughs> I would sooner die than re-redo this game. I, w I will say though, um, this, I'm not sure if you guys had a problem with this. And Chris, I can't remember if... Yeah, I do have the issue you're talking about. You don't even have to say it. The the problem with this is that you if you... If you keep trying to home an attack eventually for some reason Sonic will lose steam and won't home an attack anymore. Yeah, so you have to stop, fall down to the dragon back thing, and then re home an attack instead of keeping a consistent flow. And it's just it doesn't make any sense why he stops. It's one it's one of the many design choices that well for one I question why it's implemented to begin with. But two, they never tell you about it. It's just kind of, you just find out. Cause, I mean, there was a point where I thought, like, I thought the game was broken. Because, like, why why does he stop home and attacking stuff? And I thought, like, oh, it's, it's on purpose. And one of the reasons why that's actually an issue is you'll be holding the 
analog stick towards Zavok and continually pressing the jump button. So you'll just kind of mess yourself up and potentially fall off and have to do it all again and not understand why it didn't work. But we killed him, so it's okay. I like the fact that when he's when he's kind of dazed, he just floats in the air. Like the Deadly Six again. If anyone's played the 3DS version, the Deadly Six flat out fly, <laughs> flat out fly through the air. Ryan, did you have any experience with the uh, dreaded 3DS version? Nope, I avoided it at all costs because I heard how bad it was. You are a smarter man than either Chris or myself. Well, it's also partially your job to play all the Sonic games, so. Well, that's Clement's job. I don't want that job. I was going to say, you're probably a smarter man than the both of us combined, honestly. <laughs> now, did you, like, what, what did, like, I, I'm, we said it in the previous part, I'm glad that the writers um, fought to include Orbo and Cubo again. But um, what, what did you think of the, of the little stick there? Uh, it was an interesting little gag. It's not like it becomes a long-running thing, it's just, uh, oh, we don't know what to do with Cubot right now, so just stick him on Orbot. <laughs> <laughs> And if I remember correctly, Ryan, this is like your least favorite sections of the game. The controls don't work here. They don't. It's, it's a pain in the ass. To, to successfully like destroy a robot is a real pain. It just yeah, doesn't I make just, any I sense. I just try to avoid everything as much as I possibly can. You're fine as Supersonic because you're invincible, but you've already beaten the game by then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get like the the f random cubes in the background? There there are there are so many design like aesthetic design choices that I just buggles my mind about Lost World. I think it was literally we can't just have clouds back here. Uh oh okay they can break off in the cubes and float around. Bring them in for Minecraft, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a popular game, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of like Sonic expansion pack for that kind of like we did with a little big planet. <laughs> well, they've done Banjo Kazooie and every other franchise you can imagine, so they may as well do Sonic. Wait, Minecraft? Wait, Minecraft? Really? Huh? Like, wait, Minecraft? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! They did like an official Banjo Kazooie like like add-on for that game. It's just it just changes the character skin. It's not an actual cool thing. Well, I mean, that's the Minecraft business strategy for you. Yeah, well, they're owned by Microsoft now, so maybe. <laughs> oh, of course, makes perfect sense. So, because they're owned by Microsoft, I look forward to seeing the uh, Tomb Raider DLC. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing is here. Um... I thought the first time you were going to, you were playing this, you just had to avoid them. <laughs> Same here, I spent like, I spent like so I was here for like minutes five minutes, avoid. like... Yes! <laughs> well, speaking of avoiding it, at this point, it's not... wasn't clear to me that I had beat it, as opposed to it's trying to kill me, like some Sonic bosses do. Then you kind of face through it, and you just have that three moments of, do I have to do this entire level fucking again? <laughs> I, know, I just wish it dropped down. Doesn't make sense. Sky Road. <laughs> it's, it's weird, because, like... Sky Road 2 is so good that it, it <laughs> kind of it kind of makes up for the rest of the uh, no zone, but not really. <laughs> like the other zones I look at and I feel inspired to say things. This one, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, again, it's like Act 1 is Zone 1, rather. Oh, here we go. Uh, Pre-rendered CG. Good stuff. Act 1 is just Windy Hill. Act 2 is decent. Act 3 is just like, no. Please don't do that ever again. Oh no, Skype isn't working well. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this so melodramatic? It's, you know what? Again, coming back to this after Boom, it's it's weird to see, like, you know, one note, dimen you know, one dimensional Amy Rose. Like, I love you, Sonic! Mm -hmm. Ryan, how do you feel about Amy and Boom? Did you have an opinion or. And Boom or this? <laughs> Uh, in Boom, because in Boom, I think Amy's actually a pretty decent character. Yeah, she's decent in Boom. She has the triple jump. She can actually platform on stuff. So she was actually one of my favorite to play as in Boom. Mm. Well, that and um, I was thinking more of the character of Amy. Though. She's just, you know, she's 
a character and not I will chase after and love Sonic at all costs kind of thing. It's I like it. Again, she, she's the Amy we should have gotten after SA1. That, that's yeah. the one thing from Boom I hope they adapt into the main series is... Amy's character. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not so much Boom Knuckles. Maybe we should keep Knuckles the way he is <laughs> in the main series. Entirely stoic and pointless. Okay. No, I, again, I like it <laughs> since ge in, in Generations and this, they they really brought back the rival, um, like dimension they have. Like, like how Knuckles is like only one. Pfft, I would have gotten them all back by now. Uh... Too bad you haven't been playable in ages, Knuckles. <laughs> Yeah, like if he's there, I want him to do a bit more than make a crack at Sonic once a game, though. Mm, I, we didn't. I think this has one of my least favorite design choices. As we are we are scrolling um, vertically up. Um, Castlevania kind of, syndrome, yeah. Yeah, it's like pyramid tower here. Like if you fall down, even though we know there's a platform down there, you will still die. Yeah, that's why I left that specific death in because I was hoping we'd bring it up. Because I just don't understand why this game just. For some stages, without any warning, it's just like, hey, um, in this game, if you fall in the 2D section, um, it's going to kill you, but not in any other stage. It's just... Well, I, I just think don't get why me, this game moves the goalposts sometimes. To me, it's... it's again, it, To me, it's more frustrating because it's you're dying, falling down to a section you were just standing on. Yeah, it's not like it's falling apart or going on fire or anything. It's still there, presumably. I just don't like auto scrolling in general, though. Like, mm. it's weird because very few like you can pretty much count on one hand the amount of the sort of games that do that, and it's not no, it's not very many. So I don't know why they thought you know let's do. I don't. I can't think of any platform fan who actually enjoys. Well, what, what are some other stages that do auto scrolling in Sonic? Because I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Bridge Zone in Sonic One and Lost System. Okay, yeah, I never um, played that. Uh, technically, there's a few. There's one of the um, side missions in Colors, which it's, it technically has an auto scroll section. Oh like, yeah, like, the spring in, um, stuff. Yeah, the spring stuff. Which I, mm. I don't want. Like you know, that to me is kind of an acceptable auto scrolling section. But to me, I kind of view auto scrolling sections as um, as oh, I'm drawing a I'm drawing a freaking blank on the term they use for it. It's like um. When you have to, when you have to protect somebody in like Resident Evil, escort, escort, escort missions. missions. I was gonna say the auto scrolling doesn't make any sense because you get to that section we just went through and you're going down and not dying. So, but yeah, escort. It's like auto scrolling sections, escort missions. You know, I don't know why developers keep putting them in games because I've found very few people who are like pro any of those. I, maybe every developer just comes around and it's like, I'm going to be the one to do it right. And I just fell through the fucking floor. <laughs> <sighs> this is the technically sound Sonic game. <laughs> it, you know, again, um, I think I, I think I made a comment in the Boom LP where I said 99.9% .9 of the time, if you die, it's, uh, it's going to be your fault. That one was the 0.1% of, of my comment. No, man, that was totally the game. That was my fault, and I thought I cut the out. <laughs> now, what, why do you why do you think they went for a you know because we're, we're actually just subjected to an extended period of watching Sonic's crotch here, so I don't really Mario slides. Yeah, Mario did it. Yeah. Yeah, but I was, I was just thought that when um the only Mario section of this I can I can think of is in sixty four, but isn't that from a, a backwards angle? No, they do it in a Galaxy 2. In oh, so 3D World. That, that's why. Yeah, in 3D World. They actually did a side section a lot, thinking about it. Sunshine maybe did it? Maybe? Um, Not from this perspective, but it did have a slide, yeah. Mm. Gareth loves Sunshine, by the way. I don't know if anyone knows that. Oh yeah, it's the, uh, it's the best, worst Mario game ever made. If if Sunshine was nothing but the kind of um the special levels It'd just be like, a different three D Mario game. It'd just yeah. be the best Mario game ever. It would be Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> exactly. I don't I don't get people who like Flood. I don't understand that. I like Flood. Come at me, man. Sonic the Fight is me IRL. Well, why settle it in uh Sonic the Fighters when Sonic's in a good fighting game called Smash Brothers. 
Because <laughs> I hate myself. One thing, like, I love a design to which, um... I, I or at least get two me. Game Boy Advances and link up and play the decent-ish fighting that. game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do kind of like the fact that they brought back the, um... I know I've, I've been kind of uh, criticizing this game for its use of nostalgia, but I do kind of like the fact that they brought back the SA2 Ghosts. What, the SA2 they, they, Ghosts? Yeah, they, they have, they, they, those literally haven't been seen in over 10 years. Everything else we have. Also, like, the f I don't understand. I, I know it, like, it's like video game conventions, but like, I don't get how when he goes off the right side, he appears on the left side. Like, I was hoping I you were know, saying that because I was just about to. Doesn't make any any literal sense to me. You are a hypocrite though, because you're like, oh, the badniks are back, and now you're like, oh, thank God, the ghosts are back. Well, From no, Sonic see, Adventure the, Two. Well, no, see, no, the the <laughs> difference the difference of that is is that the ghosts haven't been seen since SA Two. We mm. saw most of these badniks in uh, in generations or episodes one and two. I just like that they have Monterey Jack swirly eyes. <laughs> 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 They're after some cheese, all right. Leave them alone. <laughs> Oh my god, I never noticed that before, Chris. <laughs> now you will never unsee it again. I won't. See, I will, like, they try something different with Zavok. He is, um... He, he definitely puts it more of a fight than the other, um... That the, the, the weird thing is that for... It's, okay, so it's established with the Badniks that the kick is the, is the stronger of your attacks. For all the other Deadly Six, the kick does absolutely jack shit. So it, again, it, it's kind of it's kind of a, of a random thing to it where they suddenly decide that Zavok is weak to it. This is also where they require the uh, charging homing attack, <laughs> which the game never explains to you until this point. Another nope. thing, going off of that, this is another point where I was saying the game likes to move the goalposts. For the final hit on Zavok, you have to charge the um, homing attack thing up more than it lets you at any other point in the game, with no indication. I had to actually Google how to finish this boss fight because I just Same had hit. a natural instinct of the timing by now in this point in the game. But if you're going to knock him off his dragon, you have to let it charge an additional second. It's... I think it's still one of the more decent fights in the game, though. I mean, it's... If only it explained itself to you a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> sort of jamming back and forth, that's kind of funny. I do like the detail... Oh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, Chris, you were saying? I, I showed it off, but like, if you have really good timing, when the dragon starts shooting off lasers, you can actually knock Zavik into the lasers. Mm. I, I like little well, touches like that in boss fights. So. That's a good thought. I mean, I, the fact that, that um, Zavik is the only Deadly Six to get his own unique theme. I mean, like, Zora and Xena, I believe, have a uh, have a violin inserted into the standard Deadly Six theme, but like, Zavik mm -hmm. gets his own specific battle theme, which um, sounds alright. Not bad. I don't bad. remember it. <laughs> So, uh, Ryan, uh, a year later, um, any? How would you feel? Any, like, how would you sum up Lost World again? It's a decent if Sonic game. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's just kind of there. Um, it has great looks. It has great music. It has some decent control. I just wish the level design was better because that's borderline bad. Pretty much, I, I, you know, I, I agree with a lot of that. Ryan, is there anything you'd like to? Anything upcoming you'd like to plug? Nothing. Just watch our channel because we always have things going on. Sounds good. Hi right, everyone, um, thanks for watching. Ryan, thank you for joining, and uh, we'll see everyone on part seven, Lava Mountain. Bye. Bye. We're already halfway there. <laughs>